And now, is it going to be something a little bit different? Instead of the Zaya, I actually really wouldn't mind something like the even the Tristana that they were looking at, but this would be a lot more along oh. the aiming line. As the Kaisa to dive in alongside Lucid. He and did watch Omega. Ruler! And yes, he definitely did. Um, I don't like it though. I don't feel like. Just may not even be a factor. D plus have a fair bit of team fighting themselves though, and they might have a tanky pigeon in the mid lane. That'll be fun to watch. Let's jump onto the rift. Because uh, as it turns out, do you know um, Frozen Heart's still a really, 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 really good item? Chronically, did you know that? Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy that a. I think it was like a hundred. <clears throat> Gold nerf wasn't enough. Yeah. When everyone was building its second item on every single jungle tank. Yeah, I was actually having a look at Aiming's um, solo queue record as well. He builds Frozen Heart on Callista. So, you know. I get it. Yeah, yeah. he's playing into it. So, yeah, so you, by like, that if logic. you can't beat him, join him. Yep. That's, uh, that's how that one works. Uh, we're having a look at the Jinx ta Tom uh, win rate, and it is 5 and 0. Uh, two of those victories are, of course, Teddy and Pleta as well in uh, their match against Bro, if I uh, remember correctly. Playing a couple of games of this and looking pretty good. Normally, we have also seen that if one team gets the Grubs, generally the other team gets the Dragon. In the more one-sided games, teams are able to pick up both, but generally that isn't the case. But this bot lane prio is a big problem. There's also the issue, which we haven't really talked about yet, where Lucid has looked the best on champions that are really good at reliably engaging and starting fights. A lot that he also had in his challengers team, yep. which is Rel, Vi, and Sejuani. But Maokai really isn't the same type of champion. With Maokai specifically, if you use your W to go in aggressively and be the main form of initiation, you can actually really struggle as Kellen. Yeah, he's going to have to get himself out of there. Abyssal Dive is going to come through, gets the knock up onto the Rakan as Satab. They do have the ultimate. It is just Grubs. It is. It's so I, just Grubs, guys. I don't know whether we're going to be sacrificing everything oh, for this. Oh, we're 5v5 for Grubs. All right, yeah, we're going to get the knock-up onto Sponge on the side of D+. King in now trying to close the gap as the World Ender does come in. But over the wall they go. Pleta spits out the Sejuani Empress Divide. Wipes the floor with them, though, and I don't think that's exactly what DRX wanted in this moment because Pleta got pulled all the way back in after using the Devourer. And DRX, let's see whether they do decide to fight this one. I think this is a little bit more contentious. You wouldn't blame DRX for trying to go a little bit harder, trying to secure this second dragon, get themselves a little bit closer to a potential soul, and to keep the soul for D plus further away. Emperor's Divide going to throw back this uh, Yone, and the interruption is too good! Ignite was ticking, but Showmaker says that kill is mine. And now Lucid throwing out the Nature's Grasp. Really nice. Little Flame Chomp is there from Teddy to get them out of the way, but is it actually going to save them? The Devourer coming in as Lucid's going to explode, but he has the Flash. Kellen also able to battle down oh. the entrance to get out, but Rascal, he comes in. The Arcane Smash is decent, but now Showmaker, he's found the back line, and now Teddy's dead. Pleta should be next to go down, and Rascal is running as fast as he can. But can he 1v3? That's the question, and maybe the answer is going to be yes, unless Showmaker is tanky enough. Oh. Hey, Gets the kill, but Rascal is going to go down. It's messy. It's that was chaotic. Mayhem. I reckon that could have something to do with it. Uh, we might also have, you know, we do have an investigation team. Um, they're the spacemen, and they can go into exactly what That's may have happened. Oh, there's a flash. They're looking for the tank Azir, and they should be able to, well, I mean, they're trying to wipe him out, but he gets the ult off, and now he shuffles he in. Lives. Oh, my God. That is why you play tank Azir, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Kingen is going to help rip them to shreds. DRX can do nothing about this unless this lady running with scissors can get the work done. And, yes, it's dangerous, but it's not dangerous enough. And D plus, they uh, they transition from the 7-2 to an 11-2. I don't even think he knows who's there. Oh, it's the Long Kong Baron oh. Steel. Oh, well. He's moving. They, they have no the idea. information. Oh, no. No, 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 not that path. Well, he is going to oh. walk over a ward. But he doesn't know, he gets the ward in. So he does actually manage to put that one down. Satab looking to move his way over as well. Kingen's in the mid lane. D+, plus, they are just going to back away. They can kill this ward if they would like to. Kellen is hunting, though. They know that Sponge is in the vicinity. If they catch him, it's almost a guaranteed Baron. Yeah, no, Grand Entrance dead. going to come on uh, through. Um, there are a lot of bad guys in the vicinity. Can Secret Agent Sponge make it? No, he can't. He's dead. 
He's very... Well, it's going to take a bit. Oh, there it goes. No! Sometimes because we voted for him unanimously. All right, there's Nature's Grasp. It is going to uh, find a few members, and we're looking for a flank angle. All right, Satab, right on top of an enemy ward, but does it even matter as the Emperor's Divide comes down yet again? Once more, Showmaker is tanking every ability that flies towards him, and he's straight up does not care even a little bit. And now it's Kingen that is raining hell down on top of them. Teddy able to do a little bit there as the charm does come on through from Kellen. Really beautifully done here. And it's a clean sweep for D+. And any argument? I mean, there's a 7-0-3 Aatrox in the game. Like, perhaps oh, Kingen no, gets a shout, but no. I think it's still probably Showmaker. I mean, I, I, I actually, I, I think it's Kellen. Yeah, and I, 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 just, I just really like Tank Azir. Uh, as speaking of which, he is going to run away from Rascal here. Doesn't quite have his ultimate back up and available. This is going to take some time, guys. And uh, he is not going to survive. Um, yet more uh, into the let's vote for Kellen um, basket there for a moment. As he loses 10 stacks. He just made 10 stacks and then he lost them. As Kellen going to get a flash out of sponge here. Oh, the Sun Disc still doing work here for Showmaker from beyond the grave. It's an Abyssal Mask. He does. Um, he now has four items, and Sponge is going to look to engage on Kingen. I'm not sure about that one. Showmaker does turn up now as, my god, this damage is absolutely ridiculous. The Brambles are going to smash Teddy into the entirety of D+. And there goes the rest of the base. This gold lead is like one of the largest that we've seen. It is not even 26 minutes yet. It's more like an hour and 26 minutes as the Nexus will go down in what is actually just game one in this series. That's, that's pretty linear. From the 10 minute, on, minute mark onwards, it was just all D plus all the time. And that damage gap in, uh, in mid. So I think, I don't know, I I did like their game one draft a lot. I still like this draft yeah. from DRX. The drafting at large for me has not been the problem with this team, Atlas. It's just actually playing the game, which is kind of unfortunate because so often a team goes back, looks at a draft like, you know what, we were, I know what we're trying to cook, but it's 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 definitely burned. The Gen G against KT series comes to mind where they let Senna Nautilus go twice. Yep. You know, I went too ham. It was too old it's also, at the beginning. I uh, should have really, I, I shouldn't have dialed it to 11. So you should have gone for like late middle age Atlas first? Yeah, yeah. Wow, we had a draft. Oh, okay, yeah, that was it. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at it right now. Thanks to you <laughs> to the graphics team for giving us a little bit of a highlight on the champions. They are to the left and right of your screen, but now they're at the bottom of the screen as well, which is absolutely fantastic with a few win rates there as well. Um, things not been going so well for the, uh, the Varus and the Nautilus together, and that is going to continue to be a fact here as we have a look at the trades on the bottom side of the map. Pleta taking the worst end of that one. And we once again kind of liked what DRX had put together, right, Chronicle? That was, that, I think that was it's what, was good, that what you said? Oh, it's a good draft. I like it in theory, if they can play it out well. And as you say, instead just take all of them. Let's take a decent amount of time if you're not playing Rel or something with a really, really insane clear, like, uh, for example, at the brand beforehand. Right. For now, DK pulling ahead is yeah. Flash. Flash actually going to go off. Showmaker's positioning just absolutely doomed. Brilliant Emperor's Divide from Satab, and it catches him. Still the DRX looking good yeah. early on here, forcing some summoners. Might be looking towards a second dragon as in about a minute and a half. We will have the Cloud, so unfortunately for you, no Cloud Soul Aww. on the table here. That's okay. Emperor's Divide comes That's down it. yet again, though, and he's just dead. Does manage to get a little bit of a fear, but he's going to get feared right back. And Satab, that is two on the board already. Like, classic, quintessential timing yeah. uh, from the DRX mid-jungle. So really, really clean stuff as Nature's Grass towards this bottom side of the map. Let's see whether D-Plus can actually make an answer as the bubble is going to connect. In fact, the kitchen sink is going to connect, but Satap teleporting in, that is going to spell the end of that aggression. Spongy isn't close to this. Yep, there is a flash available, but the bubble is still going to connect. Depth charge is decent. The hook going to land, and that is oh! going to 
secure the kill. Beautifully played by Pleta to see the angle. But now Showmaker's coming in as well. There is the crushing Morris Teddy. Able to get the flash off. Another turret shot is flying in, is now aiming. Oh, He's I know about desperate that. to try and lock this one down, but it is not going to happen. For DK, it is a lot harder. They don't actually have great ways to start fights. Oh, there's a flash hook. The paranoia comes down as well. The Hui's ult is getting some work done, but aiming just explodes. And Teddy, he's on the board now as well, getting his revenge for all of that attention in the early game. And this should be Soul Point. And early on as well, Atlas. All right. Sure, make a moving in. They are going to try to at least contest this momentarily. King and trying to stack up that Navar oh. as well as he hops over the wall. And Showmaker just trying to be frustrating. Nature's Grasp comes in. Rascal taking a fair bit of damage, but he can also afford to do so as DRX. They're going to get out of the pit. So no opening up of the base, at least too much, as King has found Sponge and will now just throw the wallop down. Does manage to at least spell shield one thing, but he's just throwing rocks all over the place. The wallop, the bubble, and the kill almost there for aiming, but King and says, nah, mate, this one's mine. But as I was about to say, with aiming not being in the best of spots here, King is going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting, and it looks like he's up oh. to the task. Yeah, ulti going to connect there onto Pleta. Almost falls just with the combo. Thank goodness DRX put in a lot of effort to try and keep Showmaker down. As his spellbook has given him an exhaust. Checking in on the bottom lane, we do have Meganon now coming in. As, all right, Paranoia going to come through. The All Out is down as well, as it's a great spell shield to avoid the Nah. And there goes the top laner from D+. Really nicely played here by DRX. And we are honest. 5v5ing. That's what it looks like to me. Kingen has already teleported to get himself into position. Nabar decently at the ready as well. It's what we know him for as the hook is going to go wide. He's sweeping out vision as well. You can see Satap moving on over. They have an idea, they have an inkling that there is a Nar waiting in the wings, but his Nabar is going to go off anyway. Oh, that's early. There might be a window here for DRX yeah. when it times out. Certainly could be. Pleta is just going to go for it now, though. As the tree is standing his ground, there is the Nah, and the ultimate as well from Satab going to be used on just King in. Can they actually secure what? it? Can with Satab Sand Soldiers. And that looked so dire for DRX. They invested everything to trying to kill this Maokai. It didn't end up working out as Teddy. Oh, um, Teddy's ganking King in. An interesting maneuver, as Kingen thinks that he's found him. He might still have, even with Sponge in the area. Teddy trying to get the damage down, kiting him decently right now. Hail of Arrows to slow up the Nar, and finally he hits Mini again, so he can actually get some autos off. Or is it Control Ward Flip? Because that's what we're battling for right now. Sidelines Plus aren't real. One up as, oh goodness me, Sponge taking so much damage. And now Lucid could be in trouble as well. He has a Nature's Grasp, but the Tidal Wave doing decent work, but Rascal is able to avoid it. They get the heal. That is going to keep their tree alive. But DRX, they will regain control of mid, and it just feels like they're edging out every single fight. I will lose it, Atlas. Well, Kingen looking for an angle. Does get spotted on the control ward. There is another culling. This time it doesn't quite work out. Pleta going in, as is Rascal. They are just going to be avoided. Still culling now on cooldown. A few things are going to be missed there as Lucid gets hooked up. Tidal Wave is fantastic though, and now the tree is going to be okay. There is a mini Nar that's found a flank though, and that is not exactly optimal mini Nar position. But thankfully, Rascal's there to bring King into his what? turret and to relative safety. Rascal, safety. why? Throwing out the boomerang. Piercing King out in as well. Pleta has found the hook. They found King in, and he's going to be taken down. No Mega Nar for you. Oh. And it's another kill for Satab. Rascal just launches himself into the fight as this. And Teddy takes him down. Now the Death Charge is planted on top of aiming. They have themselves the Elder Drake. And DRX are going to do it. The might of the Dragon launches out of this Cassante. And DRX will march up the mid lane. DRX, after what was one of the most one-sided games that we've seen this week. Depends says, how you think about it, it's either one of the most one-sided or the longest. Top level. So I don't think you'd be as worried as you might otherwise be for the counter pick here. Udair is the 
most obvious one. Oh, uh, that's a rock. That rock confirmed. Wait, that's that's uh, that's amazing. That is so good here because you're playing into Karma and Senna. But I mean, if a fountain laser is ever gonna reach critical mass, it's gonna be in the hands of Teddy, and he has Smolder to get into it. Um, allows you to reliably match the mid to late game. Yeah. Um, uh, while also, if you do get low early, just take a free TP and be Can't fine. Do it. I like it. I'm looking forward to seeing how DRX can actually play this one out as well. Because, of course, we know that Smolder doesn't do a whole lot in the early stages of the game. But any sort of advantage that you can pick up for yourself just feels so devastating. Uh, early topside scuttle, but also plays down the ward. So they have actually been very rare. So, oh, say tab. Yeah, Showmaker putting on so much pressure here in this mid lane. It's another Q, not a Mantrid version, and Satab is going to be able to tank that one. But now I think he should probably consider going home for a little bit. That is what's going to happen. Is all right underneath the turret they go. Kellen is now very vulnerable, but he eats the Grey Health. In goes Sponge. There's the flash. The ignite is ticking and aiming, trying to get these autos through. And that is Kellen able to go home, and he has teleport. So it's not even the full punishment. Very nice. It's not too bad of a pace. We'll need to check in on aiming to see where his stacks are at. As uh, Teddy, flap, flap, flap. Gets out of there. Pretty uneventful as far as early games go, though. And similar to what we saw in game number two. Yeah, yeah we all know how game number two ended up going. Lucid might look for a play onto Teddy here, or maybe try and intercept Pleda. We'll right. find him. Depth charge actually going to come out here. A fair bit of value, Lucid finds the Q, and now Kellen could be in trouble. He's tanking the turret. I don't know about that one. Flap, flap, not going to be enough damage there from Teddy as no uh, the last one was in the air, and they are going to guarantee this kill. I don't know whether Kellen necessarily needed to flash in that moment, as the Q is going to connect, and there is the drive-by from Lucid. He'll collect that one, and aiming, even able to get another plate. That's three on that bottom side. Satab throwing orbs around, who just want to avoid DRX having that opportunity to utilize Teddy fight around him, right? This is one of these front-to-back compositions that has a very clear, you know, tank and enchanter and all this sort of stuff. He was oh. looking for that opportunity as Satab throws out the Shockwave. Q going to land onto a minion there as Lucid takes a couple of turret shots and D+. Plus not going to be able to find their target this time around. Sponge will be spotted on a control ward as he does make his way around. Maybe Satab makes a mistake and there is an opportunity there. Yeah. As all, all right, TP. Death Touch coming in. You can see Aiming, he'll get devoured. Now Lucid looks for the opportunity, but I believe missed the Q. Now Aiming's going to be flashing. Unstoppable force from Rascal into the back line. It's a decent double knock up there from Kellen. And now Kingen realizes there are five bad guys in the area, and he's going to have to try and Cassante his way out of here. And I don't even think Cassante is going to be capable of that. A Chew says Teddy as he goes maybe a little bit too far forward. Lucid tries to get out. Massive knock ups from Kellen. Teddy is limping out of the fight, and the Dawning Shadow is what finishes Lucid? off. Lucid trying to get in there. Man, is this Tempest Crypt? Oh, not quite enough as Pleta. He makes his way out. It's a bloodbath in the bottom lane, and it's DRX that come out on top. And Kellen is actually just going to drive it. Oh, look at that. Able to get a cute little knock up there, but now he could be in trouble. PP. Not sure he's going to be able to abyssal dive out of this one. Achu is going to do a fair bit of work there as they're just continuing on to Kellen, but underneath the turret goes Satab. Aiming taking a lot of damage, but will be able to lock down the kill on the Orianna. And now Spongy manages to go one for one, but Pled is in trouble now, and Lucid is all over the place. Q going to connect there from Showmaker to lock that one down. And in the meantime, there's some sort of fight happening in this top lane. Flash out from the rock, who looks to be made of metal with this particular skin, but that's fine. We'll still call him a rock. But with a composition that would like to scale, uh, it's not great news here for DRX's player. Possibly caught out of position. Kellen getting to work and is going to be help, able to help aiming take him down. In the meantime, the uh, Baron just getting in amongst it as Mom's going to yell real loud. It looks like D Plus don't really care too much about it. And Satab. Going to be able to get away with the extra movement speed. Rascal is now here as Lucid will pick up the Drake. Gives him a good old thumbs up. Says, nice rock. And then the rock is going to move away. 
And, like, D-plus just know everything. There's the kickback onto C-Tab. He's taking a lot of damage, but Lucid is now on the front line as the Baron is going to kill the center before the Dawning Shadow. Not sure whether it's actually going to matter, though, as now Kellen's just moving towards them like a freight train made out of catfish. Pleta gets over the wall, but I just don't think Sponge is going to be so lucky, and even Pleta could be in trouble as Kellen is a Catfish possessed right now on this Tom Kench, just diving forward. They stop the Baron, but they're unable to win the fight. See, they don't want to run the risk. Showmaker going to be trying and looking for these repeated mantra cues as Lucid does actually have good itemizations. Oh, Kingen! Yeah, Kingen might be caught out of position. He is going to be out of dash back, but they get the ult out of Sponge. Actually kind of meaningful here is now Kellen on that front line as well. He's an extra tank. It's not just King, and now he gets the big shield from the Dawning Shadow. Pletter is going to be the first one to go down. Massive knockups into the back line as Mom gets angry, and you can understand why. King and now will find the knockback onto Satav. This dragon starting to get angry and is trying to flap his way out, but it's a double instantly, and Kellen licks up the last one. D Plus will not waste time with the Drake, and they'll move straight to the Baron. Lucid, oh, he doesn't get spotted. Yeah, Sponge gonna get tagged by a Q there, but does give the informa information away that Lee Sin is towards the north. The big old zoom. Final super wave. Yeah, that's all right. There is King and getting pulled back in. Doesn't have a lot of friends in the area, but look, they are still just backing away because how are you supposed to do any damage to any of these guys? Showmaker is tearing Rascal apart. And now D plus, they get control of mid lane. There is. An inhibitor back in the bottom lane, but there are still super creeps down here, so Teddy has to come, o come over, clear those out. Well, it, now, yeah. be able to at least keep this bottom lane somewhat okay. Huh. It's, it's his vest. That's not enough. And they have to hit him for that one to really do anything there at all. Aiming, shooting them from about 15 screens away. This doesn't look fair. Because Aiming's also got about a bajillion stacks. No supers, though, so there might actually be an opportunity here, but the health bars are already looking low. I don't think DRX is going to be able to contest this, and they're going to give up. Yeah, so that is going to be very close to Exodia. Four minutes until that one's going to be available. And oh, we got to tell... Oh, TP. Here we go. Rock is going to make it happen. Dawning Shadow flies in, but Aiming's already killed Pleta, but he's dead. Mom comes down. And now Teddy is going rampant. It is going to be the Abyssal Dive, and uh, the base might be over. Uh, but they're going to do their very best. King and doing some work here. My god, Sponge just evaporated. What happened to the Zinzao? All right, Nexus Tower number two. Now falling lower and lower. It looks like D-plus don't even need aiming for this one. There is the flash kick. And Teddy's in trouble. King is going to be able to lock that one up with the power of Cassante. Rascal, the next one to fall. The Nexus, an option as Zaytab is on the fountain. And there it goes. Game three will be a D-plus victory. Uh, this is, I mean, why is this so familiar? This exact... Time is a flat circle. Oh, <laughs> man. Thank you very much. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Showmaker and Lucid on the side of D-plus Kia. Congratulations! Showmaker, this was your first win uh, of round two. How do you feel? I feel like there were so many dynamic experiences involved in our first match of round two, but in the end, we were able to secure a victory, which I'm very happy about. And Lucid. I feel like I only have my mind set on winning more uh, in the rest of round two. And the match was extended due to an extensive pause and we caught you guys resting your eyes. It must have been a very long day. So how did you keep your head in the game? Like when it comes to my condition, I can feel it declining over time firsthand, but you know, I tried to maintain my energy. I ate some chocolate and that's, that's about it. How about you, Lucid? I ate a banana, I ate chocolate, and yeah, it was exhausting, but I'm sure that our fans had just as exhausting of an experience today, so I think I just really wanted to make sure that we repay 
uh, their efforts you know, coming out here and supporting us. And Showmaker, you dominated the rift with the sturdy Tank Azir once again. And to date, you have received three consecutive POGs with Grasp Azir. So how do you feel about raising Azir's win rate? I feel like there are a lot of openings where I can utilize Azir, so I think that's why I have been able to play him. I believe that Azir will be very useful moving forward as well. And Lucid, Game 3 was not an easy start. However, you created a turning point in the replay that we're about to watch here. Lucid, what an insane reaction speed! right here. So can you walk us through this moment? We were uh, rifting mid and we hit their turret and Oriana came out of nowhere. So as soon as Oriana used flash, I think I instinctively just used my flash. Showmaker, Ghost visited Low Park today and he had a really funny fan sign. <laughs> Would you like to say anything <laughs> for girls who have come out of his way out here to support you guys? I'm very grateful that you came out here to support us. I think we were able to win today because of you, Ghost. Congrats again on your third consecutive victory. And now to wrap everything up, there are so many fans who stuck around until the very end, rooting and praying for your victory. So any word for all the fans on site today? Honestly, you guys went through so much today. I'm so thankful and honestly, hard work everyone. Thank you so much. And listen, it was a 3 p.m. match and now it's 10 p.m. Uh, of course, I had a hard time as well, as well as my teammates, but I think we were also just as concerned about our fans. I'm just really relieved that we were able to win. Hard work, everyone! And this will be the end of the interview with Showmaker and Lucid of D Plus Kia and back to the space.